Good morning, everyone. Our readings for this morning are Psalm 37, verses 21 through 41, Jeremiah, chapter 1, uh, verse 11 through 19, and Romans, chapter 1, verse 1 through 15. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We've come together as the family of God in the Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness for our, of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Let us worship and praise him. Hallelujah. Lord, open our lips that are, we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. O shout to the Lord in triumph, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God, it is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that has passed, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. So, Almighty God, have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we read, uh, we read our psalm for this morning, Psalm 37, starting at verse 21. The wicked borrow and never repay, but the godly gen are generous givers. Those the Lord blesses will possess the land and those he curses will die. The Lord directs his steps, the steps of the godly, and he delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. Once I was young, and now I am old, yet I have never seen the godly abandoned, or their children begging for bread. The godly always give generous loans to others, and their children are a blessing. Turn from evil and do good and you will live in the land for ever. For the Lord loves justice, and he will never abandon the godly. He will keep them safe for ever, but the children of the wicked will die. The godly will possess the land and will live there for ever. The godly offer good counsel. They teach uh, God's law as their own, so they will never slip from his path. The wicked wait in ambush for the godly, looking for an excuse to kill them. But the Lord will not let the wicked succeed, or let the godly be condemned when they're put on trial. Put your hope in the Lord. Travel steadily along his path. He will honour you by giving you the land. You will see the wicked destroyed. I've seen wicked and ruthless people flourishing like a tree in his native soil. But when I look again, they were gone. Though I searched for them, I could not find them. Look at those who are honest and good, for a wonderful future awaits those who love, in pe who love peace. But the rebellious will be destroyed. They have no future. The Lord rescues the godly. He is their fortress in times of trouble. The Lord helps them, rescuing them from the wicked. He saves them, and they find shelter in him. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, 
chapter 1, starting at verse 11. Then the Lord said to me, Look, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I replied, I see a branch from an almond tree. And the Lord said, That's right, and it means that I'm watching, and I will certainly carry out my plans. Then the Lord spoke to me again and asked, What do you see now? And I replied, I see a pot of boiling water spilling from the north. Yes, the Lord said, and terror from the north will boil out on the people of this land. Listen, I'm calling the armies of the kingdoms of the north to come to Jerusalem. I, the Lord, have spoken. They will set their thrones at the gates of the city. They will attack its walls and all the other towns of Judah. I will pronounce judgment on my people for all their evil, for deserting me and burning incense to the other gods. Yes, they worship idols made of their own, by their own hands. Get up and prepare for action. Go out and tell them everything I tell you to say. Do not be afraid of them, or I will make you look foolish in front of them. For see, today I have made you strong. Like a fortified city that cannot be captured, like an iron pillar or a bronze wall, you stand against the whole land, the king's officials, priests and people of Judah, <coughs> but they will fight you, but they will fail, for I am with you and I will take care of you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Read Canticle number four. I will take you from the nations, and it's a song of Ezekiel. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries, and I will bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your defilements, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. I will take out your flesh, out of your flesh the heart of stone, and I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you, and I will cause you to keep my laws. You shall live in the land which I gave to your forebears, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Our New Testament reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. This letter is from Paul, a slave to Christ Jesus, who was chosen by God to be an apostle sent out to preach his good news. God promised this good news long ago through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The good news is about his son. In his earthly life, he was born into King David's family line, and he was shown to be the Son of God when he raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as, a, as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them, so that they will believe and obey him, bringing glory to his name. You And you are included among those Gentiles who have been called to belong to Christ. I am writing to all of you in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be his holy people. May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Let me say first that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith in him is being talked about all over the world. God knows how often I pray for you. Day and night I bring you and your needs in prayer to God, whom I serve with all my heart by spreading the good news about his Son, one of the things I always pray for is the opportunity, God willing, to come and see you. For I long to visit you so I can bring some spiritual gift that will help you grow strong in the Lord. And when we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged by yours. 
I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that I planned many times to visit you, but I was prevented until now. I want to work among you and see the spiritual fruit, just as I have seen among other Gentiles, for I have a great sense of obligation to people in both the civilized world and the rest of the world, to the educated and the uneducated alike. So I'm eager to come to you in Rome, too, to preach the good news. Hear the word of the Lord. And we read the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up for a, a mighty saviour for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors. And has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways and to give knowledge and salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us and to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Now God longs to have dialogue with each of us. He has laid himself open to us and made himself very vulnerable to us. So our response to his reaching out to us can either make him very happy if we accept his offer or deeply hurt if we reject it. He wants to have fellowship with us and has made it easy for us to come into his presence. <coughs> what I will do is look at these two readings, firstly from the message to the people who, to whom they were addressed, and secondly, the message to us today. For most of us, the task is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. As we pray in the Eucharist each week, but for some he asks more. Jeremiah was given a lifelong task. In this morning's reading, we hear God laying down the ground rules. Your task, Jeremiah, is to carry my message to a rebellious people. They are not going to like what you have to say, and in fact they will hate you. But don't lose focus. I will be with you every step of the way. <clears throat> I've made you strong. So long as you proclaim the messages that I give you, their plotting against you will not harm you in any way. I will be with you and protect, protect you. In the New Testament reading, Paul is introducing himself to the church in Rome as he tried to get there, but he had been prevented. But he sees Rome as part of his mission field. Like Jeremiah, Paul is setting out on a new venture. But unlike Jeremiah, he's moving into friendly territory, not enemy territory. God had a specific task for each of these two men. Both of them accepted the task. We know Jeremiah is the prophet who carried all the negative messages, and certainly he did this. He gives a stern warning to those who do not accept the task God wants them to do. His warning with the potter showed him that the potter wanted to make something beautiful, but the clay was marred in his hands, so he made it into another pot, this time into something very ordinary. Once baked, this could not be reshaped. Now we sing, 
the chorus, You are the potter, I am the clay. I'm sure that we all know the words. But some of the most wonderful promises come from his prophecies. In chapter 29, we read the well-known passage to the exiles in Babylon. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you. And in chapter 31, he gives a lot of encouragement to the exiles. The audience for God's messages changed from the Old to the New Testaments. In the, New Test in the Old Testament, God is addressing the nation of Israel but as a whole. But in the New Testament, he's now dealing with individual people. He knows each one of us has a personal interest in each one of us and wants a relationship with each one of us. We each need to come before God and repent of our sin. Repentance means nothing if there's no cost. This is what Jesus achieved on the cross. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross has bought us forgiveness. Forgiveness comes at a cost and Jesus has paid that price for each one of us. We could not have paid this ourselves, but Jesus has paid the price and we're able to come into God's presence under the cover of Jesus' blood. And Paul's letter to the Romans gives us the most succinct guide on the salvation that God is offering us. He has very clearly laid out Jesus' message and work. The climax of the message is in chapter 8, but one needs to read the whole letter but it's worth spending time on this particular chapter, remembering to keep it in the context of the whole message. Paul's letter to the Romans is relevant to us today as it was to them. Yes, we have all sorts of things and distractions that people never even dreamt of in all those centuries ago, but human nature has not changed. God wants us to accept his offer to have dialogue with him. Let's reach out and accept his offer. He will respond. The Lord Jesus, thank you for paying the price for us to come into God's presence. And we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. And we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, be gracious to our land, and mercifully hear us when we call upon you. Let your Priests, be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, make your ways known upon the earth. Let all the nations acknowledge your saving power. Give your people the blessing of peace, and let your glory be over all the world. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. We say the collect. God of Sarah and Abraham, long ago you embraced your people in covenant 
and promise them your blessing. Give us the grace to recognize you as our God and serve you as our faithful people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and the lover of concord, to know you is eternal life. To serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defence and not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love for you and one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of all power, we acclaim you. Lord of all grace, we worship you. We are not worthy of you, yet your goodness makes us praise you and give you thanks. We praise you for the life you've given us and for all the blessings we've received at your hands. And above all, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the grace and the hope which his death and resurrection have brought upon us. We ask this of you, our Father, that we may never forget your goodness to us, that we may show our thankfulness not only in words, but by the service of our lives, both now and in all eternity. Heavenly Father, your Son has promised that whenever we pray in his name, you will hear us. Answer our prayers as may be best for us, granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth and in the world to come the fullness of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us and the Lord lift up his countenance to us and give us his peace. We say together the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen.